today we are going to talk about micturition reflex what is micturition reflex and what is the importance of micturition reflex so micturition reflex basically give rise to micturition waves or micturition contractions what are micturition waves or micturition contraction basically in our last lecture we discussed in systemetrogram that when the urine volume increases in the urinary bladder this is the urinary bladder and this is the volume of the urinary bladder when the urinary uh, when the volume of urine in the urinary bladder keeps on increasing the pressure the pressure in the urinary bladder also keeps on increasing suppose for example in this bladder there is 200 ml of urine and this bladder is having 400 ml of urine so the pressure in this bladder will be high but on top of this pressure on top of this pressure there are some acute waves these are some acute waves which keeps on occurring at every level of volume which basically acutely increases the pressure in the urinary bladder and it basically compels the, the urinary bladder to contract to contract basically so this is the bladder with 200 ml of urine and it has a pressure of around 10 centimeter of water at this level 200 ml with a pressure of this level at 10 but if this con micturition contraction occur or micturition wave occur the pressure in this urinary bladder will go up to 20 centimeter of water or from this level up to this level so the volume is the same volume is 200 volume is the same 200 200 but pressure in the urinary bladder or the power of the urinary bladder contraction increases for a moment and this acute increase in the power or the contraction of the urinary bladder is the micturition wave or micturition contraction and these waves or these contractions are caused by micturition reflex now if the volume in the urinary bladder keeps on increasing the pressure in the urinary bladder will keep on increasing now this, this is something which previously discussed in our last lecture as well that when the volume is zero the pressure is also zero but with a slight increase in pressure up to 50 ml there is a slight increase in pressure in the urinary bladder now then with addition of 100, 200 or even up to 300 ml of urine in the bladder, there is only slight increase in further pressure. So there is only slight increase from this point to this point. But beyond this level, beyond this level, you can see that there is a there is a tremendous increase. There is a rapid increase in the pressure with further <coughs> addition of uh, urine in the bladder or with the further increasing urinary volume. Now, that is something which we discussed in the systemetrogram. Coming back to the micturition reflex, basically, this micturition reflex which causes the micturition contraction or micturition waves it is basically started by the sensory stretch receptor sensory stretch receptors are somewhere present on the posterior wall of the urinary bladder especially in the posterior urethra now if it is the bladder it has been cut and this area is showing the posterior urethra and in when urine touches this area it basically stretch it stretches the urinary bladder and due to the stretch of the urinary bladder the muscles are stretched which basically stretches the sensory stretch receptors in this area now the receptors are present everywhere but they are very much sensitive in this region. These sensory receptors, they send signals through the pelvic nerve to the sacral segment of the spinal cord. The spinal cord in turn sends the motor signal through the pelvic nerve in parasympathetic fibers. It is the same nerve, the pelvic nerve, which is taking the sensory signals to the spinal cord and then taking the motor signal from the spinal cord to the urinary bladder. Now these motor waves, these motor nerves basically starts they start contracting the urinary bladder. The urinary bladder basically start contracting like this. So now the purpose of this contraction, the purpose of this contraction of this uh, urinary bladder is to push any urine outside the body. The purpose is to push the urine outside the body. But if the amount of urine is not sufficient, for example, the amount is this much. Now this micturition reflex will start the micturition contraction or micturition reflex, which will basically lead to an acute increase in pressure, then maintain or sustain the pressure for some time and then bring back the pressure to the basal level. So. If the urine, the amount of urine is small, it will start a micturition contraction or micturition wave, but that wave will soon disappear. As the volume of urine in the bladders in start increasing, the, the frequency, the, the number of micturition waves or the micturition contraction also starts increasing and their strength, their power also starts increasing. With the increasing volume, the strength and the frequency of the micturition waves or the micturition contraction increases. Because the contraction process, the micturition, cont uh, the micturition contraction process due to micturition reflex is an autonomous process. It is an autonomous or self-regenerating process because once the urinary bladder starts contracting, the sensory stretch receptors present in these regions, they get stretched more. When they get stretched more, they send more signals to the spinal cord. When they send more signals to the spinal cord, the spinal cord send more motor fibers and it increases the contraction of the urinary bladder more and more. With more increase in the contraction process, more signals are sent to the spinal cord and then the spinal cord send even more signals and the, in the contraction process or the micturition wave basically keeps on increasing until and, until, until and unless the, the urinary bladder uh, develops fatigue. Now, after fatigue, this micturition wave will die out and the bladder will relax for some time. It will basically relax for some time. But the, the urine is basically coming through the ureter. The, the kidneys are performing their function. The urine is forming and the urine is basically coming into the bladder and the volume of the urinary bladder is increasing slowly and gradually. So, 
after some time the micturition reflex will start another micturition wave and this time this wave will increase and its strength will also increase then it will start another wave and if even this wave die out it will basically then go to the basal level and the basal level the, the basal strength the power the tension in the urinary the urinary bl uh, bladder the tension the, the strength or the contraction power in the wall of the urinary bladder keeps on increasing even the basal level power keeps on increasing with further volume and the strength of the micturition wave or the contraction also keeps on increasing and it keeps on hitting new peaks until and unless a certain point has reached where urination occurs now if the volume increases like tremendously for example the volume has now reached this level and still urination has not occurred now at this level the tension in the urinary bladder will increase so much that it will send another it will start another reflex it will start another reflex and it will send signals to the spinal cord and spinal cord will send some signal through the pudendal nerve and it will inhibit the external sphincter it will inhibit the external sphincter when the external sphincter is inhibited urination will occur urination will occur but there is something more there is something more now these are two players but another important thing is that the external sphincter is in the voluntary control of human being and that is in the brain that thing is in the that is decided in the brain of the human being now the brain is also controlling this external sphincter because the human being have the will power to control this sphincter because the fibers that are coming in the pudendal nerve are the somatic nerve fiber that is something which we have discussed in our last few lectures so the signal which basically the micturition reflex or another reflex that is basically generated after a high pressure is generated or a high amount of volume has been accumulated in the urinary bladder if the strength of that signal is high and this sphincter is inhibited then urination will occur but if the signal in the brain the signal from the brain if the voluntary control in the brain is high then inhibition of the external sphincter will not occur and urination process will not occur and this micturition reflex will die out again it will die out again and it will start after some time but the thing is that the environment also plays an important role because the somewhat control is there at a certain up to a certain point the human beings have a control and when the environment is appropriate a toilet is available then the the, the human being can voluntarily decide to inhibit the external sphincter and allow the urination to occur but this process will keep on occurring the micturition ref the micturition reflex will keep on generating the micturition waves with the increasing volume in the urinary bladder and with the passage of time and with the increasing volume the strength of the basal tone the strength of the basal tone as well as the strength of the micturition waves will keep on increasing so that's all about the micturition reflex thanks a lot for watching the video